absence of my good friend, Mr. Wayne Woodruff, I'd like to say welcome, Facebook friends, family, and something else that I can't remember. <laughs> but then again, that's why I cut the hair. Um, I'm going to be doing the bias cut today, guys. And this was a cut first done by uh, my international creative director back in the Sassoon days, uh, Mr. Tim Hartley. And, you know, I think just really beautiful imagery. Uh, this was done back in the early to mid-90s. And, you know, it was one of the ideas that I think really helped revolutionize Sassoon, uh, way of cutting. And, you know, it became such a big way of going about doing a haircut. We've had a collection based on it at the time. You know, and many different looks. Now, the, the idea of the bias really comes down to the sectioning through the top. And when I get to that point of the haircut, you'll see how I go against the grain. Um, Tim's inspiration was the way designers cut fabric. You may have heard of things, you know, like, well, that dress was cut on the bias and the way that uh, fabric is seen together. So he used that inspiration through the sectioning and the way that the top was cut. Now, the underneath, I'm going to cut it very true to uh, what's in the book, the contemporary classic number three. Um, but keep in mind, the underneath can be cut in many different ways, and then the technique of the bias is utilized through the top. Right? So starting out, we're going to work on a shorter graduation, and I'm taking my first sections just above the curvature of the occipital bone. You're right? getting a lot of hellos. Ivan Benedetto. Uh, nice, guys. Danielle Green. Hello right back at you. Now, just as the round starts to go into the crown area, so high up on the occipital, and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna get this area out of the way nice and clean. <laughs> You're getting so many of those. <laughs> Milo, <laughs> Maximovic. Well, it's nice, it's nice for Charles everyone. Charles Johnson. It's nice for everyone to join us again. Uh, Randy and I couldn't get together uh, last week. Uh, we were both quite busy um, with different, different events and different trainings. You know, so it's good to be back and to hear the hellos from everybody. You know, and again, really excited to, you know, to work the bias cut. Some guy named Gerard. Uh, some guy named Gerard. Well, I thought he was banned from this site. <laughs> so, uh, to my good friend Gerard, scissors rule. <laughs> and you notice the shape that I'm cutting. I am working with my Hairbrain Pro scissors. And then taking that section, just really clean uh, graduation from, again, from on top of the occipital to the hairline. The sections are slightly angled, following a little bit of the curve of the head. Then the over direction is very minimal, but coming backwards towards the center. Right? And what I'm going to try to do is, you know, build just a little bit of length as I get to the area behind the ear. And what I want to do is I want to compensate for the curvature of the head. You know, so if we look at the curvature, you know, just as the comb comes off the head, the skull starts to flatten out. So what I want to do is at that point, I'll start to over direct slightly more. So the shape that I'm cutting compensates for that and gets a little bit wider, which really carries through to the length that I'm going to use behind the ear through the temple area. What's going on, Joe? Got Joe Profita saying hello. <laughs> Good to have you on, Joe. All right, so again, keeping the sections really clean, graduating slightly inward to the nape hairline, over directing back as I go. Now, this part you'll see the over direction is going to start to increase just a little bit more, again, to build that important length up behind the ear. Now, once I finish this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work this same panel through the opposite side. You know, notice the combing, getting the tension really clean, everything controlled as much as possible. And there we go, that first side of graduation. All right, now I'll work the outline a little bit afterwards. But what I wanna do is, I'm going to section off. I'll spin around for you, Randy. Sure, Keith, you can ask Julian anything. Oh, yeah. But I can't guess your question, so you're going to have to type it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he was asking you about my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so getting this side out of the way. Okay, we got a question. Again, really clean. Go ahead, Randy. So Charles Johnson is asking, yep. are you over-directing directly back or towards the center? Well, towards the center, you know, and I think we, we all use a term, you know, over-direct into the previous, right? Um, which is kind of give or take. You know, what I like to look at and how I like to explain, you know, in the world of over-direction, distance equals length, right? And what I mean by that is the more that I over-direct back, the more length that I maintain opposite to how I'm over-directing it. So if I'm over-directing it back away from the ear, the more that I over-direct or pull back, the more length I'm going to gain. Um, the less I over-direct, the more it's going to follow the curvature of the head. You know, having said that, there is no right or wrong with it. it it's just having your end in mind and knowing what you want to achieve and how much length I want to create and then pulling it back accordingly. Um, so having the end in mind and then also, you know, a consistency within the over direction so that it's a gradual build up. I don't want to come and just then just all of a sudden go, oh, I want length there and pull back. I want to predetermine that right from this section right here and then imagine the shape and how far it's going to come out away from the head shape. And then I over direct the hair into that shape that I imagine from back to front. But good section, I mean, I know a lot of times on paper, you know, we make it, you know, very mathematical, which in a lot of cases it is, right? But you have to have a vision of what that math is achieving, I think, to get it suitable for the bone structure. So this guy named Gerard is asking, do you change your body position based on over direction? Well, I try to as much as possible to over direct towards my body. So I want to comb in towards my chest. What that does is it gives me a clear vision of what I'm cutting and where I'm actually over directing it to. Right? So, you know, with that, as I'm working around, if I'm cutting a rounder shape or if I'm over directing it less, I may just step a little bit towards where I'm going. If I want to over direct it further back, I'll maintain a consistent body position and then pull everything back, which is more for like a square shape or a stationary guide. So yeah, so um, when I cut hair, if I cut hair in this position, it's where I stand in relationship to the head that controls the over direction. I wouldn't stand in one spot and then let my, my arms travel following my body towards the ear. I have to always stay in front of the section and I have to stay square to where my hand is. Now you notice tilting the head just ever so slightly um, allows me to get the angle just right. Now um, you know also getting the hand in tight here can sometimes be a challenge. Um, and you know if I had a body I might push the head a little bit more. I may turn it very uh, slightly to get my hand in cleanly. You know so the relationship to where their head is as equally as important. I find that also how you hold the scissors, if I'm holding them with my thumb in the, uh, the hole too far, it makes it really difficult. Whereas if my thumb just rests on the outside, I can get my hand out of the way and cut a little bit easier. Where if I'm inside here, now my hand is a little bit more um, in the way of what I'm trying to do. So that can affect how I'm pulling the hair. It might force me to get it at an angle that's inconsistent with the first side. So you see, take the section and then I take my hand and I just get the thumb on the outside and I can get the scissor in there much easier. You know, so it's, it's much more, uh, I guess, finesse and it allows me to maneuver the scissor much more so. You know, so now I'm starting to get up higher up in the hairline so my hand isn't as big of an issue. All right, so just about the last section. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two sections down and then progress up the crown. 
Now the next part of the crown that I want to section from is at the high point of the crown. So again, just as I take the comb and sit it flat on the head, just where the comb comes away from the, uh, the skull is where I take my section. Now if I put it on the top of the curve, I'm doing the same thing. So just at the flat spot, and then I'll take both of these sections on both sides, and that'll prep me for the next area. But I believe we had a question, Randy? Yeah, Heather Kissel is a mm -hmm. asking, what length are your shears? Uh, these are 5.5. Let me show you, just one second. And these are... Your secretary is answering for you on uh, the text, cool. too. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gerard. Always good no, no, it's actually uh, Jason. Jason. <laughs> Jason, Hunter over here helping me out. Yeah, so these are the 5.5, and these are uh, made by BMAC, and they are exclusive at the Hairbrain Pro Shop. So these are the Hairbrain series of a BMAC scissor. What's going on, Raymond? You know, I like to try to... Uh, you know, cut with something between five and six, and I find that I get my most mileage out of that length. I do have some scissors that are longer, but you know, I use them um, more rarely, you know, for, for certain things where a pair of five and a half inch, you can pretty much do anything. All right, so now I'm gonna start my sectioning through this crown area. Still taking them just on a little bit of an angle, but mostly vertical. And then my elevation, you'll see, taking my guideline from underneath, I'm going to lift up. What that'll do is just that little shift upward is going to help eliminate any tendency to have a weight line. So you'll see when it falls, it falls very seamless into the underneath length. Alex Antonio is asking how long you would take to do this particular haircut. Um, in a salon situation, if that's what you're referring to. I'm sure that's what you're referring yeah, yeah. to. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much cutting at pace right now. I tend to work on a 45 minute time schedule. Um, certain things may take a little bit longer and other things may be slightly quicker, but I would say that's a good uh, kind of uh, rule of thumb, you know, for, for my work is give myself about 45 minutes. You know, and if you go back and you look at the classic and the contemporary classic series that I've been shooting with Hairbrain, I think all the videos have fell within 45 to 50 minutes. And that's from, you know, section number one all the way to uh, the end of the blow dry and the refinement. Um, you know, I have to, uh, you know, account for talking as well. But I find that when I'm demonstrating, what I'm really doing is I'm just describing what I'm doing. So I can kind of keep it to a realistic pace. Um, I'm a very true believer of if you can't do something in a realistic time that's allowing for a salon and a client, well, I mean, how much is it really worth? You know, so one of the things that I really like about the contemporary classics and the, the classic series is that it's really driven by, you know, classic and creative classic salon work that's realistic to what we can do in a salon situation. Right, so notice the hand position changes. So I just tilted the head slightly forward because I'll just bring the head upright. If I try to do this with the head upright, you see the angle of my arm becomes very awkward where my elbow is too high for my shoulder. So what I do to compensate for that, I could lower the chair a little bit, but then also just tilt the head slightly away from my body and now my elbow is level with the shoulder. So still cutting palm to palm, fingers up on the one side, fingers down on the other. You know, and again, the standing position that uh, Gerard mentioned prior is so important. So you notice when I'm cutting the lower area, blending it in, I stand right in front of my section so that the center of my chest is pointed at my fingers. Now, I'm not going to stand here and try to do the next area, so I stand in this position, and then as I work up, I step, so again, so that my center of my chest is pointing, you know, at my fingers. Matthew saying hello from Croatia. Hey, Matthew, how you doing? Yeah. 
Good to hear from you. I've been doing some great posts on Instagram. Which and Laura from Edinburgh, Scotland. Oh, nice. Oh, Edinburgh, sorry. Nice, welcome. And, you know, I think this time slot's really great because we can get a lot of our European friends um, because it seems to work with, with the time change. All right, so again, just hit in my last section. Again, if you notice the body position, standing directly in front of my work, stepping slightly back, so that I'm continuing that same method. And then finally, straight into the other side, making sure that it blends. I'll just lift this out, so it's actually a good view from there, Andy. So I'll take this here, and just make sure that those two blends. Two sides blend really evenly. All right. All right, so got now. Colorado, Mexico, lots of love coming in. Awesome. Williamsport, Pennsylvania from Tina. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, the homeland. Donnell. All right. Serbia. Oh, it's going to go on. Yeah. <laughs> we got them from all over today, which is awesome. Amy Long, uh, Long John is asking if you ever cut African American women's natural hair this way. You could, yeah. Now, I find when you're working with Afro texture, especially in its natural state, um, you're going to get a lot more expansion. So as long as you're cool with that and that's what you want you know, to achieve, um, it's definitely a great technique for that. I find a lot of times with uh, Afro texture, you know, especially because of the hairlines tend to have um, much less of a density by cutting it short and then leaving the top longer and disconnected, you can get some really beautiful looks out of it. All right, so now the transition into the sides. So Istanbul, Greece. <laughs> it's great. We, are, we are going worldwide. It's so the United Nations of hairdressing right now. All right, so you see that section now follows through really cleanly. And now what I'm doing is I'm using my guideline right from the back. Latvia. <laughs> and then we'll follow that through downward. Now again, as I work forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly over direct back. And again, you know, understanding and knowing the rule of thumb, the more I over direct back, the more length I'm going to maintain through the front. Keeping everything really consistent. I find that at this part, you know, not that it's wrong, but if you uh, over direct back too much, you get um, kind of like a, a graduated bob look. So just really over directing very minimal back onto the previous, not really much further. So we have a big event with Hairbrain coming up here in uh, Los Angeles, and I believe it's about, I wanna say, maybe three weeks, two, two weeks? Uh, June 11th and 12th, we have um, our scissor versus razor class with Gerard and myself. And we're actually going to be doing it at Sugar Skull's Loft in downtown L.A. So thank you for allowing us to come and invade your space, Carlos. Very appreciated. Looking forward to being out there with you and a couple of your staff members. Uh, we have a question. Yep. Um, Andrea is asking what kind of comb you are using. Yeah, this is um, a hairbrain comb. Right? So, um, you know, really great, put together really well, nice material, feels really good in your hand, but also what I like about it is the little, uh, you know, the uh, broken tooth there, which helps me section really cleanly. You know, and all of these, uh, you know, the tools that I'm using as far as the scissor and the uh, combs are available on the Hairbrain Pro Shop. So now the same on the other side. So just working off of that section where I divided it in the crown and now taking it down diagonal through the sides. 
And again, mimicking the over direction. Following that length all the way up cleanly to the top of the section. She said Dr. It, that was from Dr. Dre. From Dr. Dre? Yeah. Andrea El Allen. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she's saying you're so talented. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you, Dre. Dre's going to be um, with my sport clips oh, nice. crew down at the premiere show. Cool. Not this weekend, next weekend. So if any of you guys are you know, down at that show, it's an amazing show right in Orlando at the convention center. You know, be sure to uh, go by the Sport Clips booth, say hello to everybody. And I believe they're also going to be giving out uh, fidget spinners, which I am super excited about. Because even though I'm not going to be there, um, I'm having them send me some fidget spinners. <laughs> Paula Banks has a question. Yeah, She'd Paula? like to know, do you always hold your scissors coming over the top? I'm not sure what... Coming uh, over the top. Well, let's see if I can figure out what we're, what we're referring to. She, she might mean... Well, you're palming them, or yeah. I'm not sure. Well, well, I'll cover both aspects. Okay. So with this side, what I'm doing is I'm cutting from underneath, and I'm working up into the length through the top. Now I'll do a quick switch on the other side. On the other side, because of my hand position, I'm working from the top, and I'm working down into the length. As long as I lock it in correctly with this hand, this is the important hand. This hand opens and closes the scissor. Not that it's not important, but if this hand's in the right position, even though I'm cutting down on this side and I'm cutting upward on the other side, the hair's locked into place, so it's not moving. Right? If I was sliding down into it, that may make a difference. Now, if you're referring to putting the scissor behind uh, my pinky so that it's out of the way, what that allows me to do is, well, first it allows me to keep the, the scissor tight and closed so that I'm not going to have it, you know, open up like this and then as I'm combing, cut into the hair. Um, it also, you know, gets it out of my way so that I can maneuver the comb really easily. Now, it uh, may seem a little bit trickier than what it is, but basically all I'm doing is I'm taking my index finger and pushing the scissor back. So I take it, I push back, and then I'm just clamping it into my palm, right? And that frees these, free, these three fingers to work the comb. Then once I grab the hair, I put the comb back in that hand, and then I'm just simply just dropping my hand forward, and then it's in position to cut. So here. All right, so now, We've Lots of compliments and saying thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. So now we work this shape from the back through to the front. And though even though I'm mindful of the length that I want to keep in the front, I still need to come back through and remove some of the excess length. So now with that, I'm going to take my sections diagonal from the front down into the hairline, comb this hair forward, and then work from the outline and remove any excess length and weight. And that's, it's really preference on how, how much you want to see, you know, how much layering you want to see around the cheekbone, right? Once I get that to where I want it, I'm going to over direct forward. And what will happen is the hair will uh, stop reaching after a few sections, right? So normally, just as I pass the ear, if I'm over the directing towards the previous, it stops reaching. Right. Now, from that point, what I can also do is comb the hair down. And then if I need, I can just work this with the uh, crease of the scissors and just refine that a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to open up the cheekbone area um, to raise the cheekbone and expose it a little bit more. And then I'll work the same way through the other side. And Massey Enna says that she's going to uh, host you in, it's going to be an honor to host you in Sardinia. Oh, awesome. Yeah, guys, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be at Premier because I'm going to be in Italy, in Sardinia, 
doing a uh, Paul Mitchell show there. We have our global gathering coming up um, next week. So really excited to go out and hang out with my European family out there. So thanks for the shout out, Massimo. And it's also it's going to be you know great to see you know everyone else that's coming out. It should be a really exciting event. And I mean, you know, aside from great hair, I'm going to be in Italy in Sardinia, so I don't have much to complain about on that one. Really excited. All right, so again, just running out just as I pass the ear. Comb that hair down. And then if you need, just again working with the crease of the scissors. And you can see I, I stabilize it with my other hand so that I have something to pivot off of. Right, for control. And then just really lightly, you just see the scissor moving. So I'm not holding it stationary and dragging it. It's just a very light finesse with the thumb. Right, so just really relaxed and then working that through. All right, so guys, so all of that, and now we get to the bias part. Yes. Uh, Lou, Lou, Lou. Uh, Louis Matteo Alberta said that he met you a very long time ago in LA and now he gets to see Tracy in London. Hope to see you soon. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I mean, hopefully the next time I get there we'll be able to hook up. So definitely stay in touch through social media. And how can they do that? Can you tell us? Uh... Yeah, yeah. My Instagram is uh, Julian Pearl, P E R L. Um, I also have uh, my Facebook page, which is my full name, Julian Perlingiro. And then I um, just started a business page that is linked to my Instagram, which is Julian Education. All right, so now, uh, let's, let's start with the section. So you see the section going diagonal across the head shape. There's, Take this, there's our nose. Right. So this is the crown, so I'm taking my section diagonal, and then what I'm doing is I'm over-directing the hair away from the furthest point forward, so I'm over-directing back and away, and then cutting a line parallel to the section. And then I'll continue my sections at that same diagonal. And now I'm going to over direct just about to a stationary guide. You know, I could increase it or decrease it again, just depending on length. Yeah, so Marina has a, a, a nice um, comment. She's saying that she's definitely going to watch this after she's done at work. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so with all of these guys, if you, you know, I know it's some the middle of the day for some of you and you know, you're busy doing clients, but if you go on to the harebrained, you know, uh, if you go on the harebrained <laughs> Facebook page, <laughs> Facebook page, you can find all the videos in the full series. You know, if you look up my name, you look up, um, there's a playlist, yeah, a playlist of it. We have, I think I don't have the exact number guys, but we're going on about like seven or eight, you know, different cuts right now. Uh, Randy's also been, you know, doing some really great editing and putting out some one minute on Instagram videos, some quick refreshers, and then also, you know, some two minute versions for those that, you know, if, if you need to just refresh on something and see it quickly, you know, it's been really a great, a great help in promoting it all. Kelly Hubing saying amazing work. Uh, thank you, Kelly. And she'd like you to do her hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Make an we, offer. We'll see if we can work that out. <laughs> And Kylie Summerhays is asking, do you have your own hair salon? I do not, Kylie. I um, educate full time. So, you know, uh, pretty much I, uh, you know, travel and, you know, do the hair shows, do in salon education, um, do private seminars, um, you know, so all sorts of different things. You can keep track of what I'm doing and where I am. You know, I'd say the easiest would be on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be doing a series of classes with Gerard with the Scissorverse Razor. We have the first one that I'm doing here in Los Angeles. Um, and then there is a second one that a good friend of mine, Mr. DJ Muldoon, will be doing. 
and then Gerard and I are back in Texas doing one uh, at a, with a really good couple of really good friends at Rosie Matos's salon and a good friend of mine, David Lowry. So, Can you explain now what you've just done with this yep, second? I would love to. So now what I'm doing is, so the first side, I took the sections diagonal going from the back towards the front. Now what I'm basically doing is I'm taking the opposite angle, right? So if you look at it, you know, if they were both there on a diagram, they're crisscrossing sections. Which is great. Um, let's see what her name was. Uh, All right, well, we're looking that up. Yeah. See, now what I'm oh, Shelly Fleming wants to know um, the benefit of the diagonal section. Well, what it allows me to do, it allows me to build the weight in the direction of the section. So I'm cutting it shorter and narrower, yeah, narrower through the parietal ridge and then getting longer through the center and then doing the same on the opposite side. So I end up with almost like this teardrop shape. You know, I see a lot of people go, oh, I'll just take my sections vertical and over direct back. Well, then what you're doing is you're creating a flat surface from side to side through the top where this has much more roundness. So it goes from a wider crown Right? And then it rounds through into a teardrop and then into the length through the front. You know, so it's all about the subtleties, I think, with craft hairdressing. Um, the littlest things make a difference. And realizing that everything makes a difference. You know, so you might be able to, you know, do a look that's very similar with a different sectioning. Um, but I mean, every time we change any aspect of what we're doing, it's going to create a, a slightly different result. And how does head shape uh, change what you do? It, well, I mean, with, how would you respond to a yeah, different head shape? Well, it, it just depends. I mean, when I section the hair, I work with the curvature of the head shape, right? So Vidal said a long time ago, you know, the, the foundation, the fundamentals of what we do, you know, back in the '60s. We started to learn, when I say we, I'm talking about him. We started to learn hair, how to cut hair um, as if we were a tailor, right? So a lot of meanings to that. Um, one meaning that I was the most obvious for me was looking the hair as if it was a fabric. So I had a great question from someone about, could you do this on Afro hair? Well, of course you could. I could do it on Afro hair. I could do it on the finest, straightest hair possible. Am I going to get the same result? No, because I changed the material that I'm working with. But what also was meant by that statement that we started to learn how to cut hair as if we were a tailor, was we used the head shape to um, balance the transitions from one point to the other. You know, so just by looking at the head, and you know, when I initially said, I'm taking my first section at the curvature of the head. Well, if the head was a different shape, that curvature would be higher or lower, but it would base, be based off of the shape of the skull. The second shape, um, section was at the top of the crown at the, again the curvature of the head the transition points the third section was at the curvature from the top and the side and followed through what we call the parietal ridge right so if the head was wider or flatter that would be at a different level which would change the shape but ultimately because I'm using the head shape as the um, guideline for where I section What's going to happen is I'm more likely to do something that's suitable for the bone structure. How that relates to a tailor, let's just say, if I'm a tailor and I'm making a shirt, the seam should be at the curvature of the shoulder. If the seam was down here, it would look like my shirt was too big. If the seam was up here, it would look like my shirt's too small. If the seam falls, well now I know that the shirt fits. Right? And that's the difference between where, you know, the part of the shirt that covers the torso and it rounds into the shoulder that then covers the arm, right? So if you use the head as your guidelines to your sectioning, again, you're not guaranteed, but you're more likely to do something suitable for the bone structure. How was that for an answer? That's great. <laughs> All right, so again, over-directing back, and then following that up, and you can see the peak of length that I'm gaining through the top, Right, so again, I'm here, right? It's that teardrop shape. And then again, here's my last section. And then follow that through. Now I can take 
a section through the top from the crown to the forehead and just lift that up and you can see I have an equal buildup of length so that's without cross-checking guys so that's, I'm having a pretty good day right so then I can just kind of dust that off what I don't want to do is I don't want to cut too much of that off because then I'll lose that peak of length then just making sure that that blends there now what I'll do is I, what I'll do is I'm going to blow dry and then do a little bit of refinement. So let me get my blow dryer here, guys. I'm going to give kind of a looser salon looking blow dry. I don't want to spend too much time doing the blow dry because I want to get the refinement point of the haircut. I want to do something that the client can make really look good with very minimal effort. Keeping the airflow down and just loosely following the brush with the blow dryer. So you see that disconnection that you get from the tempo area through the top length. And again, that can um, really you know, vary on how much length you have in the top and how much length you want to maintain in the top. But if I'm working with a circular wrapping motion, I get a very natural movement to the hair. Today her hair seems to want to go to that side better. You should be able to, uh, you know, style this either way, either side. Definitely convertible. See the lines of the haircut, making sure that everything's where I want it to be. What kind of brush is that? This is um, Georgia is asking. Yeah, this is ceramic brush made by Vets. Um, it's kind of a copy of the Denman brush. But a nylon, nylon bristles, ceramic brush. Definitely good for giving um, a nice finish on the hair. But also, <clears throat> it slides through the hair very easily. So you shouldn't get much resistance. Do you need that charger? All right, so now, just a quick refinement. So what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the natural hairline. Now you'll notice a lot of times on the doll head, it always looks a little bit too low and that's because of the hairline being so low on the doll heads. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna work from this arch and then works with the tips of the scissor and work that through, keeping a very natural edge to it. So just get a really, you know, natural curve following, resting this right on the skin, resting the back of the scissor, and I can follow the curvature of the neck. I'll work the other side the same. Again, holding the scissor really carefully, not to put my thumb into the finger hole too uh, far, just resting on the outside so that I can maneuver the scissor. You know, these are some of the things, I mean, obviously with scissor versus razor, we're going to be getting into some really cool haircuts, 
but also talking about some of the functional differences and some of the functions of the scissor and how by holding it certain ways and angling it and moving it, it can really help um, you know, perfect your work and give you the best opportunity that you, you, uh, you know, can to get a good shape. Now, right through there, I've already really refined through the side, but what I can do is just work down into the hair. And again, not dragging the scissor, but slightly opening and closing it, cutting the hair where the scissor and where, where the two uh, parts of the scissor meet, and then removing the density so I can get a softer image around the face. And all of these things, guys, is, um, you know, hair, the, the hair requires what it requires. You know, so different textures are going to require different amounts, um, if any at all, of slicing or pointing into it, right? So this is all the things that you're personalizing, the shape for the client's texture and bone structure. You know, so what I'm doing with these is just really giving you, you know, kind of the um, default of what you could do, but you don't always have to work you know, with uh, exactly the same method, you know, you may just point into it and that may be fine. You might not need to remove as much weight if the density isn't there. Now, through the top, again, density required. I'll comb the hair down. And what I'm looking at is the curvature here, right? So I can see the hair comes down and then it flattens into the face. So starting at that point, just working into the hair, again, slicing, into the direction that I want the hair to go. So again, so where I'm starting is if I look at this here, the width and then the curvature, and it comes up and follows through to the other side, right? So very, very um, precise about where we slice into the hair and how we point into it. Um, it's not just, you know, close your eyes and hope for the best. It's very th well thought out, right? So then the same on the other side. What I'm looking for is the curvature from here. Thanks, and Fernie. <laughs> I'll follow that through. <laughs> What's up, Fern? <laughs> so follow that through. Now, I won't have as much because I already did the first side. You see how that just flattened that out a little bit? And then work that down into where the weight is on the other side. We're in a race before the battery dies. We're almost done, man. I think we're just <laughs> about done. I don't have really much more to do. Um, I don't need to go up and point into it because the weight that I set within the haircut is where it needs to be. You know, so I don't do too much internal pointing and slicing unless the hair is really thick. Do you ever thin the hair first? We have a question. Um, I, can't, I can't really say that I ever have. Um, I do know um, with the doll heads, I may go through with the thinning shears. Um, I have a really good friend um, named Humi who is at I Love Japan, and he's a really, you know, he's a wizard when it comes to the thinning shears. How about curved scissors? Um, no. Trying to get as many of these questions in before yeah. the camera dies. No, no, don't, not using, I mean, again, I don't really have a need for it in the way that I cut hair, because basically I would just curve my fingers, and then I would, you know, follow the curvature of my hand. And then uh, would you ever visit South Africa? That Evangelist Gene Jackson is asking. I would love to go to South Africa. Yeah. I would love to be able to set something up to come there and do some seminars. Um, I had uh, planned to go a very long time ago, and um, I was going to go there for a month, and it all got messed up, uh, and I ended up not getting there. So I would, I would definitely, it's definitely one of the places that I always have wanted to go and always have wanted to go cut hair. The people. You know, there I think are really wonderful. All right, let's wrap it up. Cool. All right, guys, so I think that's a good image and a good uh, example of a variation on Tim Hartley's The Bias Cut, um, starting with a shorter graduation on the underneath. Um, and again, the shape on the underneath can vary. The idea of the bias really comes through the top area with the crisscrossing sections and then taking the length, working into a longer peak of length through the front. Um, you know, beautiful look from Sassoon in the early, in the early to mid 90s. Um, and you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.